Hey class, today we're going to go over the portable um, circular saw. In the industry, a lot of people call them skill saws, um, so just keep that in mind. There are two different types of uh, skill saw. There is a battery powered one, which is just like this one. Um, the battery's right here, I've taken it out um, for safety. Um, and then there's also corded, and in our shop we have um, a mix of both. So, but they're essentially the same other than the fact that one's corded that you have to plug in and the other one's battery powered. So next we're going to talk about like the components and the parts of the circular saw. So the first thing that we have is this little Allen wrench right here. Um, and what that is for is to change the blade right here. And to go along with that, if you can see down in there, we have this little uh, blade catch. And what that does is it keeps the blade still, it holds the blade still while you're changing the blade so that the blade's not freehanding while you're trying to um, loosen the blade off. Um, so you don't um, essentially like cut yourself on the blade. Um, the next thing is we have the trigger and the trigger sa the safety for the trigger. So as you can see, um, the trigger won't engage unless you put the safety down. Um, so when you're making adjustments on the saw or anything like that, just make sure that you don't put the safety down um, and engage the trigger at the same time or else obviously the blade's going to spin. Um, also another thing is, I've already done it for you, but make sure you pull the battery out before you make any adjustments to the saw. Um, that just is an another level of protection for you so that you don't accidentally engage the saw um, and um, have an accident. So the next thing we're going to talk about is along with safety, along with pulling out the battery and everything, is these little safety guards. There's one right here and then there's this one, this little black one, and it moves as you're cutting um, the wood. But before you guys um, operate this skill saw, I want you guys to make sure that you visually inspect and make sure that both of these guards are not only attached but also whole and um, working in proper working order. Um, and the next thing we're going to talk about is right here, this adjusts the angle of your skill saw. And as you can see, um, you got all your degrees right there. Um, and how you adjust that is you just loosen that up and then you can move it to whatever degrees you want um, based on, you know, what you're doing. So we, for our demonstration, don't need it, so I'm just going to put it back into the um, level or the zero degree position. Um, and then the next thing we're going to talk about is your depth adjustment. Um, and that thing is right, or sorry, that's right here. So you just move that forward and then you can adjust the depth of your um, blade. And you can see right here, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, but there is a little inch or a little measurements on there to adjust. I mean, I'll talk you through that once we do the demonstration. So the next thing we're going to talk about, um, the most important part we're going to talk about is um, PPE. And as you remember from our slide, PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. So obviously I already have one piece on and um, my safety glasses. And this is something that you need to have in the shop at all times, regardless of whether you're operating machinery. If you walk out into the shop, you have to have your safety glasses on. Um, I'm going to take them off so that I can show you guys really quick. Um, on the safety glasses, they need to be Z87 safety rated. Um, and it might be a little bit hard to see on the video. But um, it's usually right here. And you can uh, see it. It's just a Z with an 87. Um, they have to be a Z87 safety rated. You can't use sunglasses. Um, you can't use regular glasses if you have them, if you wear glasses. Um, they have to be safety glasses. Um, unless, of course, they do have some safety sunglasses, but they'll be rated Z87. And they also have some, like, vision glasses that are safety rated as well. Um, but those are kind of special circumstances, and um, if that comes up, then I'll clear them with you guys. Um, the next thing that you should have is gloves. So, this is kind of one of those things that is special to the machinery that you're operating. And in this case, with the circular saw, um, it's important to wear gloves because as you're cutting the wood, um, 
oftentimes we can get splinters, slivers, things can um, come off of the saw when you're cutting. So it's important to have gloves so that you don't tear up your hands. Um, and then the next thing you're going to have to have is um, earplugs. Um, noise is a huge issue and in the shop, whether you're operating a circular saw, welder, or whatever. Um, so you have to have ear protection. And I've chosen earmuffs, but you can also use, they've got some, those little rubber ones that you roll up and stick in your ear, and then they, or the little foam ones, and then they expand in your ear. They also have um, little wax ones that are specially fitted to your ear. And also they, some of you may have custom ones because I know some of you go shooting and all that stuff. Um, but the one thing, the one thing I do want to say here when talking about ear protection is there is not going to be any sort of, um, like earbuds, like music earbuds allowed in the shop, corded or cordless. I know some of you have AirPods and Samsung, um, ear, ear, or er, sorry, excuse me, ear pods, but, um, none of those are allowed, um, for one specific reason, with the cordless ones, is you're more likely to be listening to music with those, which means that you're going to be distracted, and also if something were to happen, you wouldn't be able to hear what's going on in the shop. And you need to be able to somewhat hear what's going on. Um, and the next thing with the corded ones, obviously that is an issue because it's a loose, loose cord, and it can be tangled in the machine, any one of the machines out here in the shop. Um, so that's a no-no. The next thing I want to talk about is your clothing. So first thing, we're going to start with our shoes. Out in the shop, you must have closed-toed shoes, preferably leather. I don't want any athletic shoes of any sort with the mesh or anything like that. Um, it's either flame-resistant or, which most of the time is just leather, um, for two reasons. One... Um, if things sort of fall on your foot and you had athletic shoes on, you don't have really much protection there. And also because a lot of things in the shop can cause, um, they have sparks going off of them and they can literally catch your shoe on fire if you have the mesh. And if you have synthetic fibers in your shoes, they can, they will melt straight to your toes and your foot and that would not be good at all. Um, the next thing is make sure that your clothes aren't loose fitting. Um, so much so that they drag and can get caught in the equipment. That would be horrible. You don't want that to happen. So make sure that you wear, um, somewhat tight fitting clothes. You don't have loose, um, parts that could catch in the machine. Um, and the next thing I want to talk about is for those of you with long hair like me, I've obviously already pulled it up, but you need to make sure that you pull your hair up into a ponytail. Um, for one, that way it's not all on your face and also for two so it doesn't get caught in the equipment again. Um, alright, so the next thing we're going to do is move into, okay, so now we're going to move into the demonstration, but first I want to show you guys this, because these are essential, um, parts to, um, the circular saw, they kind of go hand in hand, these are saw, called saw horses, and they just kind of hold, um, your board, give you something to hold your board on, um, but with that, you need to make sure that you're not cutting your board in the middle of your two um, horse saws because if you do, it has the potential to bind up the blade on the skill saw and it'll kick back and could potentially hurt you. So what you want to do is make sure that you're cutting off of the end. We've already made a mark right here uh, and that's where we're going to cut. So the next thing we want to do is before we put the battery in, is we want to make the adjustment. So this is three quarter inch board. So we're gonna make our depth adjustment right here. And um, I just moved it down to the three quarter mark. And then you're just gonna make sure that you tighten that. Uh, and another thing I want to note before we get started is this is where this little zero right here, that's where your blade is going to be. Um, but you also on want to make sure that you're watching the blade so that um, you can kind of see what you're doing. So now um, you just plug in your battery. Um, if you have a corded, obviously you're going to plug it into the, 
on the outlet. And then you're gonna make your cut. So you're gonna hold down the safety guard or the safety for the trigger. And then you're gonna make sure that you line it up. And then you can release the safety. And then like I said, you're gonna walk where the red is. Um, and that's that. So that's how you use the circular saw and all the safety considerations that you need to take into place. Once you're done, I want you to remove the battery, um, set the circular saw down, and then it's important that you make sure you clean up your mess because that can pose a tripping hazard to everyone else. So please make sure that you clean up when you're done.